the next piece I want to dive into a little bit is agent design patterns. And so this is how agents are organized. Like, how do you take those three components that we just talked about and how do you structure them? How do you combine them? How do you set them up into these kind of common patterns of execution? We'll talk about a few examples here. And so the first is the most basic based on what we've talked about so far, which is the router architecture. Uh, and so that's just using a pure router to say, okay, for a given input, I'm going to take that given input, call an LLM uh, or some uh, classification model, and then decide to call it, go down one of these different um, skill paths. So in this example, this is a, looks like a database lookup agent here, uh, or a database kind of copilot. So it can look up data for you. It can analyze that data, and then it can visualize that data from there. So in this flow, you take a user input, you see the different possible options, go down one of those skills, complete that skill, and give the input the output back to the user. So this is kind of the most straightforward path that you could follow, uh, where you're basically just taking an input and then seeing, going down one of the skills, getting back to the user. Um, this is very simple and straightforward if you don't need to kind of take multiple actions to answer the user's question, if each of your different skills uh, that you can go down the path of are kind of self-contained in that way. Um, however, this kind, of, uh, this kind of basic architecture so far wouldn't necessarily work if you needed to take the output of one of those skills and feed it back into your system, because this is kind of just linear in this case. Uh, so you might need to add in cycles. And as we talk through these as well too, the other thing to kind of keep in your mind is that the simpler uh, one of these architectures is, or the simpler um, kind of system that you have, the more consistent it will be as well too. Um, the more LLM calls you introduce, the more variability you're going to introduce, which is going to make it harder to get consistent outputs out of your application. So you might be looking at this and be like, this is too simple. This is not going to really address the need that we have. I will tell you that this is actually the exact architecture that is used for a production agent that Arise has that runs a copilot in our dashboard where it will run to a particular skill, complete that skill and give the answer back to a user. Uh, and we've been able to have a lot of success with that copilot agent because it's so simple in that case in its architecture. So first of these is the router architecture. The next is kind of, you can probably see where that was going, the more complex kind of orchestrator architecture, which is similar to the previous one that we looked at with the one big difference being that after the skill is complete, you return back to your LLM router or something similar to it to then uh, either decide I'm going to call another tool there or I'm going to return back to the user. And so the, here you're introducing the concept of first looping. Um, and then from there, that would introduce some extra complexity, obviously, because you're going to have multiple LLM calls that are made, but you're able to take things like the outputs of skills and lead them back into your application's execution. So for example, uh, in this database uh, copilot agent, you might have a case where the user asks uh, for some information from that database. First, the router decides to call a lookup data tool to pull data from that use case or from that database. And then it might say, okay, well, I need to, the users asked me to create a graph, so I need to actually then create a visualization based on that data before sharing it back. So in this case, it might call multiple different tools to execute. There's a question uh, that is, uh, can we have multiple routers, like one for GPT-40 Mini and another for Gemini to do the same skills? You could have multiple routers through, for example, like you could take this block here in the middle and you could have another kind of round of it that's happened either linearly or with the loop here. And maybe you choose to have one of those routers powered by GPT-40 Mini and then a second one powered by Gemini. If you're seeing better performance with one, then it kind of begs the question of why not just use that in both places. You can use both, um, but it's just may introduce additional overhead that you don't need to, to use different models there. And then beyond that, thinking into some other architectures that we often see, you might have one that's more of a sequential or prompt chaining architecture where you are, uh, you know that you're going to go down a very specific workflow. Uh, and maybe you have a couple of decisions that are made as you go through that workflow. However, um, they're pretty straightforward in this case, and you know that you're gonna go down a particular path. An example of this type of flow uh, is one that we can give is say you have a, an agent that produces social media um, posts for you. And so you might have a first step there be um, researching a given topic. And then you might have the second step there being taking that research and distilling it down into a very specific kind of post to make about that particular topic. So writing the actual social media post, and then you might have a final step, which is to then actually connect to APIs for uh, X and uh, Blue Sky and LinkedIn to actually post your particular output. So you might have kind of these linear workflows there, and you may have a decision gate that's made at some point within that to say, okay, if we weren't able to find enough information, or if the post quality isn't high enough, maybe you're using an LLM to make that, that judgment, then abort, or then go back and, and research again there. So you might have kind of this more sequential chaining architecture. And for those that are paying attention, you're probably realizing that there is some fuzziness between these different architectures. Because depending on how many tools you have, how many skills you have, things like that, you might have a case where a routing logic system looks very similar to a prompt chaining system. 
And so again, with this one as well too, this is sort of the closest to a non-agent flow because you have some LLM decision-making points that are being made, but uh, there's not too much differentiation in the types of paths that I can take, which also makes this one relatively simple to evaluate from a path perspective. So one is a more of a parallelization ar architecture, which is where you are taking an input and then maybe, maybe you're going to a router, maybe you're going directly to LLM calls, but you're going to run multiple either skills or steps of your application in parallel. So you run all of them at the same time, and then maybe you aggregate their response afterwards. Now, a common kind of version of this is a research agent, where maybe you have an agent that's going to do deep research on a particular topic. And so first you take in an input from a user, then oftentimes you'll decompose that into different kind of sub queries to say, okay, maybe the user is asking to research ancient Greece. I'm going to create three different search queries there that are ancient Greek history, uh, ancient Greek um, geography, and then culture and then run all of those searches in parallel, have my system go out and run each of those in parallel to each other, get the response back from each of those different ones and aggregate that back into a single report. So this is really just to kind of get you thinking that you can run certain skills in parallel to speed up your agent. That's always a common technique that you can do. Uh, so know that you can parallelize the skills as you run. And then one more that we'll cover here, uh, which is the evaluator optimizer architecture. And the idea here is that you introduce an, a concept of a critique step. So you maybe generate a response back from a, so say you get a user input, you generate a response, and then you add in a step here, which criticizes that response. It says, hey, this could be made better in this way. And that critique step gets to decide if the response is good enough to go to the end user, or if you need to return back to your agent, rerun certain parts and see if you could improve. This is a concept that's somewhat called reflection. So you hear people talk about reflection in agents, which is taking a pause and kind of looking back at what the agent's done so far as part of its execution and deciding if any steps need to be rerun or can be improved. And so this is this evaluator optimizer architecture where you're evaluating the agent's performance partly through its execution. And then you're deciding whether you need to optimize performance on certain steps before you even give an answer back to a user. So you see this in things like, like a code generation agent, for example, you might have a step that critiques the code that was generated before it could it's given to a user um, and you might have it in say copyright generator as well too so if you had a copywriting agent that could uh, write for you you might introduce a critique step to critique the, the writing and see if it was correct in that case and so you can use that kind of critique step to say uh, do i need to improve a certain part of the agent the last note i would make is with each of these as you think about them they can be connected to each other you can use them in combination these are just to kind of give you ideas of how people will compose together these different pieces you might have an orchestrator that depending on some of the paths it goes down those are examples of prompt chaining or you might decide to use an evaluator optimizer on one of your particular skills so you can kind of compose all of these different pieces together but these are the general kind of high level architecture concepts to be aware of and ways that people will use some of these different pieces. So just know that you can kind of combine these in different ways as you go through.